Okay, uh, let me ask you, uh, how many people know this song? First time you, you read it. Read it. Right? First time you read this one? So you, you, you have some background, right? So first my message, before my message, I, would, I asked Jojo to give us this reflection five minutes, okay? So let's, ask, let's hear from you, okay? At first. Now? Yeah, now. Okay, we'll do afterward, okay? Prepare right now. All right, so I need time to. All right, so uh, 30, 30, 39 days left and 41 days left, okay? So you know what it means, okay? What's 39 days? No, I'm wrong. So Jojo's defense and 41 days left is uh, Jerry's wedding, okay? So for, I'm going to tell you 49. 39 and 41, okay? So time is coming. And then I don't know how many days are left for you, finally, okay? <laughs> right? So, so, so we have some time, okay? All right, so uh, let me tell you why we protection, protection. Preservation. 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 Okay, right, so Christian life is what? Provision. Provision, protection, protection preservation. and pro uh, preservation. preservation by our Lord Jesus, okay? Right? So okay. we're talking about three things, right? And then we'll talk about uh, provision today, okay? Right, so it's very important concept. And what does it mean? That we can say, I shall not walk, okay? So, uh, today you got up, right? And then, of course, you will think about, I want something, okay? Right? Remember the moment you just got up, boom, I want something. I said, I said, my wife, I want coffee. <coughs> Right? Right, so, so this need is real, okay? And then and I'll talk about the provision of God first. Okay, let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for the word of uh, Psalm of David. Uh, please help us to listen to you and uh, know that God's provision in our daily life, in our life, and to the end. I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, uh, just give you a background. Uh, this is written by King David. He was a king. And I think this one was written uh, when he was a shepherd. So th this was very young, young man David. Maybe he was like David Bjorn, okay? That age. Right? Right? Okay, David Bjorn, okay? And maybe uh, Peter, okay? 12 years old. Uh, David had many brothers, and he was the youngest son. And then he was the most handsome guy, and he took care of uh, his father's flock. Okay? And we have this romantic notion of being a shepherd, okay? Right? Who wants to be a shepherd? Who's going to your wife to be a shepherd? Be a, be a shepherd. Study, be a shepherd. <laughs> okay, Joe, get on. <laughs> what day is it? It's Sunday, okay? All right, so. Uh, uh, because, you know, nobody wants to be a shepherd, okay, nowadays. It's like shepherd is like working at the uh, Express Royale as a coffee ma maker, okay? Right? Or McDonald's, okay? In American tongue. It's not glamorous. Because, why? You have to work what? 24 hours a day. Right? And then you have to take care of the flock of sheep, 100 men so. And those sheep has their characteristics, okay? So it's not like you become a PhD advisor and then helping with the smart people. But by nature, the one of the characteristics of sheep is what? Wander. What? Wander around. Oh, they are, they are very sheepish, you know, they flock together, okay? That's, that's the, and second one is what? What, baby? Stupid. Oh, stupid? <laughs> oh, how do you know? <laughs> stupid, and they are not clean, right? Yeah? They don't take a shower every day, right? Right, and what else? They are fat and ugly, okay? But they are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, that's, that's why there are lots of wolves who want to eat some of them, okay? 
Uh, yeah, very delicious. Mm -hmm. they, they said, make me a uh, lamb chop right now. Are you hungry right now? No. No? <laughs> You're not hungry? Okay. So uh, David was a shepherd, and David said, I believe this is the one of the most profound statements of the Bible. Okay? How he says about God. He said, the Lord is what? My shepherd. Okay? So, let's look at it. The Lord is my shepherd. Okay? So let's look at the one by one. The Lord, okay? The Lord is God. Right? So, uh, Israel people were so afraid of the Lord, so they don't even pronounce it. They just put down four letters and then that's it. And then they try to say, Whenever they go to the Lord and they just, mm, they read it and then, is my shepherd. So, uh, if you look at God, God is, who is God? Right? So, fundamentally, we Christians want to know God, who God is, right? And then God is manifested in many ways. So, uh, if you are really smart, like Einstein, you can look at this, or Newton, you can look at this word, okay? And look at it and say, oh, there must be some principles, or there must be some kind of laws, okay, that governs the whole universe, okay? Right? And then he looks at stars and then and how the light will curve and then, oh, and then he, he had a very wonderful time. Look at the, the, the world. because it's not random. It looks like random, but it's not random. There are rules and regulations and guidelines. Okay? Right? So that's the way God is one who made heaven and earth. And then this sun comes up and so goes down. And then how human be being become? It's a profound mystery. And then we are here to find out how God put them together. That's why we go to school. Okay? And then without that assumption, without that uh, foundation, you should not study at all. Do you know why? Because everything is random, then why you study? Right? And you write the paper and say, oh, God's law is very random. It applies this way, that way, and, then, and nothing happens. You know? So God made heavens and earth. It's very important concept, right? And God is big, right? How big is God? Which is bigger, God or the universe? God. God is big, okay? And how big is the universe? Big. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so every year we change okay, how big that is, okay? And then, and with, our, with our human mind, how much we, we see is very limited, so uh, we tend to revise how big the universe is every year. Right? So God is big and so some people say God is so big, so he is just so impersonal, okay? It's like regulations and laws and then you know he doesn't care. But look at it again. This God is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And what does it mean? So, everything, mine is good, okay? <laughs> Trust me, okay? And I know one guy who never cleaned my Jeep, you know? But when he bought the car, he, he used to clean everywhere, everything, you know? <laughs> like wax. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then if you live in an apartment, you don't clean. But you, you buy a house, you clean, start cleaning, okay? <laughs> Mine is different. Trust me, it's mine is different, okay? Right? 
Right? right? My son is different from your son. Right? Right? My major is different from your major. My, you know, is a possession is a faithful. So, a God who can have everything said to David, I'm your shepherd. So think about it, the implication, okay? And also my wife is also precious, okay? I don't care how other what I do, my wife is different, okay? So my so think about this is our confession of who God is. And then we can say many things about God, but David's eyes, he was his shepherd. And then if, if if the Lord is your shepherd, then what is what matters? And then the next sentence, he encapsulates God's provision. Okay? And then the Lord is my shepherd. And then he makes point. I shall not walk. If God is your shepherd, then you have what? God's provision. Okay, so uh, this is my main point. So today's main point is what? God's provision. Okay. So uh, let's let's the Lord, my shepherd, provision. Okay. Not your provision. So that provision is very important. Who provides? Your provision will determine your life, okay? Okay, so uh, please uh, go home and meditate on the statement, the Lord is my shepherd. So we read, we read uh, John's gospel, and then at the, at the end, John says very clearly like this, okay? Uh, clearly, that, that I wrote this Bible, the John's Gospel, so that you may know Him, right? The identity of God, and by knowing Him, the Lord, Christ, and Son of God, you may have eternal life. So this is the, the doorway to know God and have eternal life. So identity of God is very important. So if people want to ask you, who is God? Then you have to say, God is, the Lord is, like this. So this is a confession of his faith. And he made the right confession. So uh, let's pray. Let's, 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 let's go on. Okay? Let's pray. Let's pray for the Father. Heavenly Father, please help us know who you are and your provision for us so that uh, we can live as a children of God. And this is the essence of our life. Please grant us your grace to know you. I pray in just name. Amen. Okay. Uh, there is a, I, I, you know, somebody wrote the anti psalm okay, anti psalm I never knew that there was an anti psalm until my wife, my wife uh, gave me this anti psalm so, so let's read anti psalm So one paragraph, okay? Uh, let's read one paragraph of anti psalm Well, who wants to read, okay? My son, Andrew. My son, Andrew, okay? Read <laughs> one paragraph, okay? Mm. Am I my own? No one looks out for me or protects me. I experience a continual sense of need. Nothing's quite right. I'm always restless. I'm easily frustrated and often disappointed. It's a jungle. I feel overwhelmed. It's a desert. I'm thirsty. My soul feels broken, twisted, and stuck. I can't fix myself. I stumble down some dark paths. Okay. Thank you very much. So... You know, the lack of a provision in your life is like a pain in your life, okay? So suppose you have a pain in your hand. Why you have pain? Because there's something wrong. 
Oh, that's right. Okay, Mr. Yusuf, that's right. <laughs> There's something wrong. <laughs> Is paint good or bad? Good and bad. It's, it's good and bad, okay? It's good and bad, okay? Because without pain, uh, you will damage your, 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 your hand more, okay? But too much pain is not good, but it, it just, it just pummels you and you become useless, okay? Right? So, likewise, when you, when you said, when you hear David said, I shall not want, okay? And I said, when I read that, he said, he's crazy. I never find anybody who had said, I have everything. But I believe that, that as a shepherd who was a bottom of society, who worked 24 hours, he felt he wanted many things. He wanted to have a nice bed, comfortable, warm, and sleep, you know. And then he has many needs, right? But he can say, in spite of all this, he said, I shall not want. I lack nothing. How we can say that? Maybe he become dumb. He become like a sheep. Kind of. <laughs> he stayed with the dumb people too much, okay? And he lost it in reality. But he found out the clue that when we want something, provision, that means we are, we are wanting to have something. And that's very good. Without that, we'll do nothing, okay? But uh, then how we can have this, how we can say, even though we want many things, and how we can say confidently, I shall not want. How can you say that? The clue, 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 clue is the first sentence. The Lord is my shepherd. That doesn't mean that sometimes you'll go hungry, sometimes you'll go sleepless night, and sometimes you'll, be, you'll feel cold, and then you feel this provision, okay? you want some, something, okay? But this provision leads to our confession. The Lord is my shepherd. So, when he made uh, this confession, he thought about God, okay? And what God does to us. And he, 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 he says, he makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in path of righteousness for his name's sake. Right? So these are the provisions of God that, that the Lord himself will give to you. And what are the things he gives to you? He makes me lie down in green pasture. It's rest. He gives rest. Right? He leads me beside still waters. He gives you peace. He leads me in path of righteousness. He gives the path of righteousness. And then all this is what? For his name's sake. The ultimate life and goal is you live for the glory of God. And then, then that is the direction. And then if God's name is honored and then you understand who God is, then you do not lack any provision. But on the other hand, the Bible says very clear about who we are. Okay? You said David said we are dumb, okay? I agree with that. Okay? I'm not that smart, okay? They understand. I have much to learn and much to grow. And we have this uh, uh, you know if you read the uh, Bible uh, uh, from Genesis on, and God made everything good, and then He made us in the image of God, and then uh, there is uh, chapter 3. Do you know what chapter 3 is about? 
man decided not to live with God. Man said, I am the shepherd of my life. We don't need any shepherd. Okay? So they, they, the man said, oh, maybe we, we can do better than God. Okay? Maybe we can do better than God and then we, we live away from God. Okay? Goodbye God. And they said just like that. And then what is the consequence of that? The consequence is that the death came because it's almost like, it's almost like, do you know what, what that's almost like? It's almost like you are, you are in the, up in the air, two miles up, there's no oxygen. And so you, you have this mask, an oxygen mask, and suddenly you say, oh, I don't need an oxygen mask. Pew, cut it. <laughs> What's going to happen to you? You die, okay? Right? That's what it is. Because, you know, we had this, this uh, perfect action and then breathing well, and suddenly say, oh, maybe we don't need that. Boom, okay? So it's almost like driving a car, okay? Driving a car, and they say, hey, I don't need the engine. Just pick your engine up, okay? Right? That's what man did. He said, I don't need God. Maybe I can live without it. And then God said, if you walk away from me, you die. Surely not. They surely die. You know, that, that's it. And then you broke the relationship with God, and then that's it. And then and from that time on, the Cain's become restless wanderer. He wanders here and there, here and there, here and there, and then uh, he just died. So, so Isaiah uh, 53, 6 encapsulates who man is. And then uh, Isaiah chapter uh, uh, 53, 6 says, We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each one to his own device, okay? That's human being. I don't care how, how smart you are, how Christian you are, you have this, this tendency to wonder every day. Right? And then, uh, and then basically what, what you do is uh, you look at other Christians and say, maybe I can do better than that, and then they're stupid, and I'm smart, and then I can, I can do this way, you know, and they go this way. And they wonder. And then we have tendency to wonder. And I, I, I you know, it's, it's not for you, but it's everybody. You say, I have tendency to wonder, okay? And, you know, this semester I become stupid, okay? And I thought that I was the excellent student. Okay? Guess what? After five minutes, my mind began to wander. <laughs> Here and there. Right? And then I took my smartphone, I become more dumb. You know? <laughs> That's it, end of my life. <laughs> I'm chatting with my son and Andrew. <laughs> and, then, and then my teacher calls me, and I don't know what. what. <laughs> Right? So we have tend to wonder, okay? This is our human nature. Everybody wonders. And that's okay, but the, the most, most dangerous wondering is you wonder from your shepherd. And then you, you think that you are smart, then that's your death, okay? You die. So at most you can be a what? Lamb child. BBQ, that's it. So, God knowing this, who's my shepherd, gave us four provisions. Rest, peace, restoration of my soul, and the path of righteousness. Right? This is what you need. Because usually, uh, smart people around here, those who get PhDs or, or, or master level or bachelor degrees, you know what is the number one problem? No rest. No rest. Because they are smart. Their mind is wandering. They cannot rest. They cannot go to sleep. 
So God says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. God said, go bad, <laughs> go to bad, okay? That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that, that, that's, that's not popular saying to my son, okay? They want to play a video game, okay? <laughs> lie down in green pastures, go to sleep. Without rest, life becomes torment. If you cannot sleep, there are many pains in your life, but the most difficult thing is you cannot sleep because you are one. But the Lord, your God, makes you lie down in green pastures. And then what does? He leads me beside still water. <coughs> it's a peace. He gives you still waters. And then this water needs to be needs uh, to nourish you and make green pasture. Okay? And then he leads me uh, and he restores my soul. How God restores your soul. Uh, there are many ways God can restore your soul, but, but I, I want to use the shepherd uh, terminology. Uh, he restores your soul. Your soul is that your soul is tend to wander, perpetually wandering here and there. And then he brings you to him. So that what? So that you can have rest and peace. And that is the restoration of your soul, okay? Right? That, that, that two things are restoration. So, with rest and peace will restore your soul. Because uh, you are wandering around, uh, there are so many wolves around and they try to catch you. Catch you. So, uh, Jesus told the most important parable in John, uh, Luke chapter 15. So, he talks about the lost sheep, right? And then, the, the shepherd goes after the lost sheep until he finds it and brings it home. And that's the restoration. We think that, uh, we, we have tend to think that how we can restore my soul by my own effort. That's not true. God has to do something to restore you. So Isaiah 53, 6 says, we all like sheep has gone astray, each one to his own way. But the Lord laid down the iniquity of us all. So that is our restoration. And when you believe that restoration, we can have peace and we can have rest. And after that, we are restored. He leads me to the path of righteousness. That means we understand that what we have done to wander here and there. It's wrong. So you become humble, and then you say, hey, maybe we should follow God, you know, the, our shepherd. And maybe he can lead me to the path of righteousness. And that is the restoration also. Right? The restored people follows the path of righteousness. And what is this righteousness? We believe as Christians. Righteousness of Jesus. It's not your righteousness. The path of righteousness is not your way, but Jesus' way. He, went, he died for our sins and rose from death. And that is the, that's the path of righteousness. And we believe that righteousness do it for uh, his name's sake. Because the Lord is my shepherd. He didn't abandon us. He sought after us. He brought us back to God. And he died on the cross. And he rose from death. And he became my shepherd. <clears throat> and that is our, our righteousness. Right? So, uh, for his name's sake, it, it's the, you know, I, I think uh, David at this time, he's dedicating his life. My life is for the glory of God. 
May God's name be glorified through my life. So um, that is our fundamental uh, goal. Right? If we don't have a shepherd, okay, I'll tell you, then what you going to happen is that our emotions will take over. We'll be led by our emotions, okay? And that, that's not that's not good good way, okay? Sometimes your emotions get up and down. And also if you are not led by uh, your shepherd, then, then you, you, your goal of your goal of what? To be good will will lead you, okay? So uh, basically what happened is that you know, okay. We could talk about the three W's, no? wisdom, wealth, and wife. Okay? So, you know, <laughs> I have no problem with that. You know, having a wife is good, uh, wealth is good, and wisdom is good, right? But if you lead, led by those things, leads me, for example, our Christian life is by what? Led by your what? No. Led by your desire? No. It's a life led by the Lord, my shepherd. And then he promised what? You can say, I serve not one. I do, I lack nothing. That doesn't mean that you, you recite this and uh, drop out of school, okay? Don't do that, okay? That makes me more aware of your wondering that makes me more aware of God's grace, that makes me more of God's patience, and then we can say, ah, let me try. Maybe perhaps I can try God's way. Right? So uh, we read uh, two verses today. So uh, we're going to look at the Psalm 23 in three weeks. This week, we did what? God's, the Lord's, Provision, 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 okay? And next week, what? We're going to? Persuasion. And then, the third week, we'll do the persuasion, persuasion of the saints, okay? Yeah, that's very important because God will lead us to the end, okay? That's the uh, preservation of the saints. So anyway, uh, we thank God. So I cannot say much about this psalm. Psalm has been read so many occasions. And some gives you so much comfort. But uh, let's spend a few, few weeks to look at it because this will give you the God. Who is God? And who are we? And what we need? We need what? Rest, peace, the path of righteousness. And what else? I miss one. Restoration. Right? And then please compare your list of what you want with God's list, okay? And then you can realize, wow, oh, oh, I can be so off. And then you you come back, okay? And then you can pray to God, the Lord, I want many things. But help me confess that you know more than I do. And the Lord is my shepherd. Please help me to come close to you and give me your rest, <coughs> your peace, your restoration, and your path to righteousness. And then my life is to glorify your name. Okay? Can we pray this daily? I want to give. Okay, he'll say you'll do it. Okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, the Lord is my shepherd. And this is the key to having God's provision. Uh, we uh, sometimes, because we want to be smart and we think we know better, so we want provision. To make provisions bigger than our God, the Lord, our shepherd.
and we have tend to wonder uh, from time to time. Uh, we, we send you Jesus to bring us back, and he has to pay the ultimate price, the price for our wandering. The Lord laid down the iniquity of us all, and when we look at this God, we can uh, only confess, the Lord is my shepherd. And please lead us by your care and also help us to follow you, submitting to the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.